welcome back to Life on Point Radio. And for this week's episode, we are talking about motivation. Uh, And I have some thoughts on this thing called motivation. So we're going to get into it. But before we do, we are going to uh, just remind you, please don't forget to subscribe on whatever platform you are listening to, whether it's Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Anchor, YouTube, any of them. (laughs) Um, Please don't forget to subscribe on whatever platform you're listening to. And don't forget to rate and review this podcast. Um, We definitely want to hear your thoughts and we want to know what you're thinking know what's going on and um uh and yeah so we are just getting this thing going and i'm so excited we are on the sixth episode today which is super exciting and um if you've never tuned in before hi i'm ellie and this is life on point radio i'm a business owner and a business consultant and i teach people how to identify the power they hold and create wealth with it And so if you want to learn a little bit more about my journey and what I've gone through and how I became a entrepreneur, um, go check out uh, my first episode of season three, which is my journey to entrepreneurship. And um, you can learn about me a little bit more there. So uh, yeah, and with that being said, Let's get into this. So motivation is a thing that uh, we tend to sell, right? And motivation is a big thing with motivational speakers. I mean, it's in the name. And, um, you know, recently I was just kind of thinking through, I've been listening to a lot of business podcasts. I've been listening to a lot of people talk about motivation and having the motivation to do things and, you know, seeing a lot of um, emails come through that have the titles, you know, how to have motivation and X, Y, and Z. And, you know, I I started to realize because I'll get these spurts of motivation. I started thinking about what motivation looks like in my life. And as I was thinking about this, I was kind of, you know, just just thinking about it and just kind of realizing, you know, most of my life, at least as far as I can remember, so being a teenager or, um, you know, to now, basically, I don't remember really feeling motivated to do a whole lot of things. And, you know, I think, really, I think my motivation builds on doing things that I enjoy doing. And I don't know about you, but if that is, if you're like, you know, someone like me, I don't get motivated very easily. You know, I can I can say, you know, I'm motivated by this, I'm motivated by this, you know, in my relationships, I'm motivated by, you know, someone meeting my love language. Um, in business, I'm motivated by money, you know. Um, uh, but that's just, it's not really the case. I don't really, I'm not very motivated. I'm passionate about certain things or I'm not passionate about anything <laughs> is really how it goes. And, um, you know, I started looking into it, like, what is this thing, motivation? What is it that so many people are trying to sell? And, you know, I've, I've gone through all different types of seminars and things like that just on my own. Um, to kind of discover, you know, you know, how maybe maybe what they're saying about motivation will help. I don't know. And I have found that I feel, you know, I feel good after, you know, I feel really, really great after the meeting or the seminar. Um, I'll feel the push to start doing what X, Y, and Z again, but I don't really feel motivated. I, you know, to me, I I feel like I feel the motivation, but motivation just goes as fast as it comes. And so for me, I started looking into a little bit more about motivation and, you know, just just experimenting, processing and looking uh, with different people and watching different people, even in my own personal life and how that all works. And I started to ask this question, what is this thing motivation? And, you know, I started looking it up by definition, which um, by definition, it means the general desire or willingness of someone to do something um, or the reason or reasons one has for acting or behaving in a particular way. Um, and so for me, I was like, okay, motivation is like having drive, right? Like, What's the difference between motivation and drive? And so, you know, when we say we need motivation, motivation isn't, you know, as I was thinking about this, motivation isn't really something you can attain. It's something that you put into action, right? And so 
you know, it's the desire or the willingness to do something. You might have the desire and the motivation to clean your room, but that doesn't mean in two minutes it's not going to disappear, right? So motivation is not bad, but what I'm realizing is there's not, there's so many people trying to sell motivation when really it's the question should be why is your motivation not enough what it does it need to be partnered with motivation needs to be partnered with follow through right it needs to be partnered with something in order to be sustaining because motivation in my personal life is this fleeting coming and going thing like i will have the motivation to go into the dance studio, for instance, you know, maybe one day and then that or like the day before I'm supposed to, I'm, I'm able to go into the studio. And then the day that I wake up, I'm like, I have no motivation to go into the studio right now. And that happens. That's normal. Right. And so when we are a little more realistic about what motivation is, motivation is, you know, this desire to do something right and when what happens when that desire runs out what happens when that motivation runs out what happens to it you know and it was this question that i started to ask myself because i found myself losing motivation for a lot of things and when you're losing motivation for a lot of things how many of you know that that's not a very good thing (laughs) um that's not a great thing when you start losing motivation for everything that's going on in your life and so You know, even when I look at the desire or my willingness to do something like when, you know, if and it might be context, too. But for instance, you know, I don't really look at my desire or willingness to help my boyfriend or my family. Um, I don't see that as the motivation. I don't know. I don't see having myself as having motivation to help them. To me, it's because I love them. This is a natural response because this is how they feel loved. And so I want to make sure that they feel loved. Um, So just trying to figure out, okay, what does this look like? And so, um, you know, so then I started looking at more than what is motivation, what creates motivation. And so, you know, really, I started to look into it more intrinsic motivation is more of a short-term drive for example you know a momentary a monetary incentive at work but might be um, good to initially motivate you right like when you get a promotion to do a job that's maybe you know it still fits inside your wheelhouse but it's adding more to your plate you're gonna have maybe maybe this is a big maybe but you might have the motivation to do that because of the pay raise um you know and and discipline is what you have to partner motivation with in order to see the follow-through right um and you know discipline in this context refers you know refers to training yourself to behave and work in a controlled and regular way or essentially building healthy habits right so if you are let's say you know i'm motivated to get fit you know um you know i'm super motivated to get fit and i'm now going to you know i'm gonna come up with a meal plan i'm gonna come up with a workout schedule i'm going to come up with you know how many ounces of water i'm going to do and then you set yourself up right you doing that means that you have the intrinsic motivation but if you don't do that if you don't follow through then you can't you're i mean obviously it's not going to happen right so it goes motivation then it goes follow through then it goes discipline right so the importance of follow through is you know, what creates your motivation, it's, you know, it's not really, discipline doesn't create it, follow through doesn't create it, motivation is motivation. Motivation is more of a kind of, I don't know if it's an emotion or a response um, or a physical response because personally, I feel motivation within my body and the way that I feel, right? Um, And I don't know about you, so if, if I feel motivation in my body and the drive to do that, right? Drive, you know, drive could be anything. It could be, you know, you thirst, hunger, and the need for warmth is an example of drive. You know, a drive creates an unpleasant state, you know, a, a tension that needs to be reduced, a, um, 
a resistance. It causes a, um, a, a feeling of just being sick and tired of being sick and tired, right? And, you know, seek, you know, humans and, you know, humans seek out ways to fulfill this biological need, right? It's a response. It's a bodily response. And so we get a drink when we're thirsty, right? When we're thirsty, you have the drive to drink water. So you're going to drink water. If you're hungry, typically, if you're hungry and you have the drive with hunger, you're going to go get something to eat. It's a reason, right? Drive and motivation ha- go they coincide with one another. And so the motivation is taking the small steps towards follow through. And the drive is the reason why. So again, going back to we talked about goals a while ago, you know, that's the same thing, right? It's goals and your why is going to continue and hopefully continue to motivate you to follow through with whatever it is that you're trying to do. So in business, if you are, let's say, you know, okay, I just, you know, I just became a distributor of X, Y, and Z, or I just own my own business, or I just started my startup. And, you know, you have set in place some of the things that you need to do that you know are really pressing and you're motivated to get them done. The second that motivation disappears, what are you left with? If you're not able to follow through, then what happens? Nothing happens. (laughs) Um, Nothing happens except for you, again, getting to that point and getting stuck at that checkpoint of follow through, right? You'll, you'll go through the same cycle. Most, more than likely, if you're anything like me, you know, in my personal experience, I'll, you know, get the drive to do something. I'll get the motivation. And I got to tell you, like, even with the podcast, for instance, for with this podcast, you know, there's been a couple of the past couple of weeks where it's been really hard for me to actually write out my notes and get this going and sit down and film and record and all of that. And I get the motivation to do it. And as soon as I get it, I maybe have it for a few hours and then I feel tired and I feel exhausted. And then that drive is no longer there. And so then my follow through, I don't ever reach my follow through because the follow through happens in that sticky spot between creating a habit and exercising the habit that's already there. So the follow through is so important and then after that you start to create a habit what happens or you know you start to create tasks or routine what happens you start to get better at it and then as you keep consistently doing it you build discipline and so you know for me you know, I I bet I got a lot of my discipline from dance. There were days I did not want to go to dance. Believe me, there were days that I did not want to put my hair in a bun and put on the leotard and tights and go to dance. There were so many days that I did not have the motivation or the drive to do it. There were some days where I was questioning why I was doing it. And you know, that's normal life. You know, you're going to question, why do I have to pay these bills? I have no drive or motivation to pay these bills. But if you don't pay them, guess what? Your water gets shut off. You get evicted, whatever the case may be. So you can't always just rely on that, right? You have to be able to continue on. And ballet really helped me build discipline because it's doing the same things over and over and over and over again until they become second nature and then you progress and you keep going and you do it over and over and over and over again and you know even you know even having my parents keep me accountable and giving me responsibility at an early age even though i hated it it developed discipline in me and so you know if my parents did not hold me accountable for not doing my chores i would never know how to clean and i would never know how to cook right i would never have a clean space i would never have a you know i would never have food in my fridge you know that's just the reality and there are things that not everything in life you're going to love and not everything in life you're going to have motivation for. So more than selling motivation, it's these three 
points, right? And and then it makes you question, like, is is this motivation that everyone is selling a fraudulent thing, right? And, you know, people literally are selling motivation for hundreds of dollars. Motivational speakers are constantly selling their services to help you, you know, get motivated and start your business or, or whatever the case may be. But motivation is such a short-term thing. And motivation is kind of this odd thing because it's fleeting. And whereas drive and discipline are long-term, right? If you have the drive, which again is your why, your reason why, your goals, you know, again, going back to the goal setting and having your why, you know, it's important because when you lose that motivation to do whatever it is that you're trying to do, it's very, 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 very hard to even keep going when you have no motivation. So then you have, what's your second backup, right? It's like a backup. It's it's like, um you know, when you put stuff into a hard drive, you have to back it up in case you don't, you know, in case you lose it for whatever reason. So you wanna have a backup. Your backup is not, you know, you're not putting your all your eggs in one basket hoping that you're going to have the motivation for everything, right? You are your goal is to have a backup. That backup is your drive, your goal, your why. And sometimes it's not enough and you got to reevaluate, you got to reassess, but also discipline. I would not be able to do anything. You know, I I and honestly, people ask me all the time, you know, how do you do all this? Like you do all this stuff and, you know, I between, you know, again, go listen to my other episode on what I do, um, my journey to entrepreneurship, if you want to know more about what I do, but my crazy schedule and all the projects and tasks and managing my business, my two businesses and managing my social media and managing, you know, my dance, you know, teaching career and starting school and all these things. Why, how do you do it? People ask me all the time, how do you do it? I have discipline. That is something that even if I don't have drive and I don't have motivation, I have discipline. I have enough discipline in me to know that even though I don't want to do these things, they have to get done. So I need to sit down, put aside my, I don't want to do this, my negativity, and I need to rise above that and I need to actually go do it, right? And so, you know, not everything is going to be easy, right? And it's it's easy to be motivated when things are when when things are easy, when things are going good and you made that call and that person's like, "Yeah, I'm going to jump on that meeting." And that person's like, "Yeah, send me that sample. Yeah, send me that product. Yeah, I want to buy your product." Yeah, it's great because you have the motivation to keep doing it, right? Because, you know, great things, you know, give you a they they give you like a benefit, right? It's it's like a you know you it's a deposit. It's a good deposit. They're depositing into you positivity, which is then causing you to have all this motivation. Which I'm not saying that motivation is a bad thing, you know. And I really hope that that is clarified in this episode. Um, I don't believe at all that motivation is a bad thing. I think motivation is a very good thing. However. My whole point here is that when things are not easy, the motivation has gone in a snap. Like, you're not going to want to do it when you're, you know, when, for example, I had to go to a long day of classes and rehearsals when I was in a company. And right before I went, I got a call that my great grandmother had passed away. When your loved one dies, you are not going to want to do the tasks that are set before you. You're not going to want to go to work. You're not going to want to do these things. You're just not. That's just not how life works. You know, and I'm not talking if maybe you're not close with your great grandmother, but I was. I'm talking about any loved one. If any of your loved ones passed away or you found out that your mom has cancer or you found out that you know, let's just say life, life happens, right? And sometimes life is not always good. Sometimes these life happens situations are not necessarily good. You're not going to want to do it. You're not going to be motivated to do your business. You're not going to be motivated to go to work. You're not going to be motivated to write that th- that book. You're not going to be motivated to post that video. You're just not. It's just not how it works, right? And you know, there, there were so many days when I was, when it was 2019, you know, I was stressed 
beyond belief when it came to my finances because I wasn't making money in the ballet company at all. And I was dancing there six to eight hours a day, going to work right after six to eight hours a day, like physical labor type stuff, like cleaning houses that had not been cleaned in months kind of deals. You know, it was not easy. I had no motivation for anything back in that time. The only motivation I had, and I'm sorry, this is gonna sound really morbid, but the only motivation I had it, at that time was for God to come rapture me and to take me up. I was done. I was done with life. And now think, you know, we're here and I don't feel that way at all. I'm actually very content with where I'm at in life and I'm very content. So, you know, that's just an example. That's an extreme example. But, you know, it's all that to say when you lose all your motivation and you lose the drive to do something, You come to a crossroads where you try it out, you practice discipline, and then if it's just not working and you've given it a clean shot, like you've given it a year, you've given it two years, you've given it three years, and nothing is changing, then either you need to look at yourself and think, okay, why is this not changing? And I hope if you've dedicated three years to whatever it was that you were doing, you would do that. But if... If you are at that place where you have sacrificed so much for this one thing and nothing has changed, then maybe it's time to reevaluate and maybe it's just not for you. And there's nothing wrong with that, right? And so, you know, I've I've kind of of answered this question in a way, but how do we create motivation that isn't fleeting? Well, you know, one, you know, you motivation is going to be fleeting. It's it's just a reality of the situation. But you can have your backups like discipline and drive and um, setting your routines and your goals and reevaluating constantly where you're at, um, assessing yourself, assessing your situation, assessing where you're at, um, assessing your financials. You know, if you're a business person and there's nothing changing in your finances for the better, then maybe, maybe like, what are we doing wrong? You know, like, maybe look at that, you know, and you know, and, and maybe there are ways to stay completely motivated. I just haven't found them, and I am totally okay with admitting that. So if you found it, let a girl know. <laughs> um, you know, and, you know, let me know if you have stayed motivated and, you know, you don't struggle with fleeting motivation because I would love to know, and I would love to have you on this podcast, and I would love to hear your thoughts on, uh, on all that. <laughs> um, you know, I personally believe that you can't, create motivation it's like faking in my opinion trying to create motivation is like faking motivation you know it's like you're trying too hard and it's just not possible to fake motivation like how how are you going to do that like you know i you know i believe that motivation is kind of like an adrenaline rush you know when you get that that burst of energy you can do anything like you can lift a car you can like you can dance like 10 shows in a row you can you can you know nothing can stop you when you have adrenaline right but when that adrenaline crash comes whoo my lord that is that's that's hard (laughs) and i'm not talking about just in the sense of physically or you know mentally i'm just talking about in general motivation or um adrenaline crashes are the worst and i almost feel like motivation crashes are the same thing it's it's the equivalent like motivation and adrenaline yes are kind of two different things but when you think about it they kind of operate in the same way right so in my in my way of thinking about motivation motivation is this thing that you like kind of get through it and you're like yes i got it i got it i got it i got it you know and even if you get your first now you're like that's cool that's cool you know i i still got it i still can do this and then you keep walking and then all of a sudden you get that motivation crash and you're just like I feel depressed now I can't do anything I can't you know everything is just falling apart and you just get into this space of you know depression like I've seen people go from highly motivated to super depressed in like a matter of days like sometimes a matter of hours it really depends and 
you know and it's not it's not a bipolarism thing it's just you know it's just reality it's just sometimes you ha that that motivation crush crash is such a serious thing <laughs> and you know I just you know when that when that adrenaline when that motivation is gone you just plop back in your old ways if you don't have drive and if you don't have discipline and I feel like motivation is is just one of those things that you know by the way it manifests in my life it's like adrenaline you know you'll get an adrenaline rush for maybe four or five hours six hours seven hours and then all of a sudden you just crash like i remember doing shows as a professional ballet dancer we had quite a few shows lined up for nutcracker season um when i was with uh this other company i was with and they they were amazing and we had dress rehearsals and shows and everything and you know when you're tired you're literally just running off of caffeine and adrenaline <laughs> like you're doing class and then you're doing dress rehearsal and then you're doing warm up and then you got to stay warm and then you got to you know do quick changes and go on stage and and all these things and it is really tough it's really difficult but that adrenaline rush pushes you so that you can continue dancing, right? And, and that's a very physical, um, it's a very physical example, but uh, that is just something that I think about like, wow, like the two really seem really similar, you know? And I think, I think the way honestly to, to avoid motivational crashes is as simple as focusing on not creating motivation and getting ourselves motivated and trying to figure out what motivates us, but rather just practicing good habits and developing good characteristics like discipline, like, um, you know, like emotional, like developing emotional quotient EQ, having a good IQ, having good vocabulary, good time management skills, you know, creating a lifestyle of thankfulness, like, and gratitude. Oh my gosh. Like, you know, creating a mind, a, a, a lifestyle space of thankfulness and gratitude is game changing, especially when you are having a motivation crash. Like the only way I can recover from a motivation crash, and you know, this is another thing, like not just, not just avoiding motivational crashes, but how do you recover from them? You know, the easiest way for me to, mo uh, to recover from a motivational crash is me actually getting into a space of thankfulness and gratitude. Now, I just, I go into this space where I'm just meditating, I'm just sitting quietly, I might be reading, that might be something that I'm doing at the time being, or I might be listening to music, and I just go, wow, look at my life, I am so blessed with an amazing family that is willing to support me in most everything I do. <laughs> And even though we don't agree on everything, they still love me and they don't shun me for it. And they don't shame me for being, for having a differing opinion. Wow, I'm so lucky that I have an amazing significant other that cares about me and that doesn't just make me feel good, but actually chooses me. You know, wow, I'm so grateful for my friends being willing to help me you know wow i'm so grateful for my business wow i'm so grateful that i don't have five dollars in my bank account anymore i have more than that now you know i'm so thankful that i have a savings like like i even look around my room like wow i'm so grateful even if even if most of the things in this room was given to me i'm so thankful that people think of me enough to be able to give me these things that i want for nothing like that is such a blessing to not have to want for anything anything that i could ever think or ask or imagine I've been given for for the most part. I mean, maybe I haven't been given a Tesla, but my God, like when I was looking for a car and I had almost no money to buy a car, you know, I had maybe like 
three or four grand to buy a car. I didn't know how I was going to get around. Somebody had totaled my old car and I was just like, oh my God, like how am I going to do this? And someone came up to me, you know, or someone gave me, you know, 10 grand to go buy a car, you know, and I found a car exactly for what I wanted, the price that I wanted, and it's completely paid off and I don't have a car payment. Thank the Lord for that. Like, you know, and I constantly say this to a lot of my students and a lot of my clients and even my friends and my boyfriend and even some of my family. I talk to them all the time about, look, I'm not perfect at it. I really could work on being more consistent at this, but my gosh, when you just get into a space of thankfulness and gratitude, even for small things, like I'm so grateful that I was given this mic. I'm so grateful that even though only one of these earphones are working, one side is only working, I'm so thankful that I can hear myself and make sure that the audio quality is what I want it to be. I'm so thankful that I have a phone that I can communicate with people. I'm so thankful for a roof over my head. I'm so thankful that I don't have to pay rent because my parents are amazing. You know, I've been, you just get into this space that it actually causes joy and it actually counteracts the depression that you feel when you have a motivational crash. And it's like, you know, even though that that person said no, I'm so thankful for the four that said yes. I'm so thankful that even though there was this one person that didn't want to try my sample, these four other people did. I'm so thankful that even though this one person didn't buy this product, five people over here did. And you just have to go with it. You have to because this is the thing that i think is just so underrated is thankfulness and gratitude and i think people feel silly just think you know being thankful for their house and small things but honestly there are some people that don't have these small things it might be small to you but it might be everything to someone else and that's the reality is that when you put into that mindset you know it's like wow, like, I'm so grateful that I have food in my fridge. <laughs> like, there, you know, and, and we learn this. Um, I learned this, especially recently. You know, I always had it, you know, kind of in the back of my head, and I kind of already knew about it, but there was, you know, my friends, um, one of my sister's friends came over, and, you know, we cook. We cook normal foods to us. You know, me, my dad, you know, cooks normal foods, and we just eat, and we don't really have an issue with it, you know, and, you know, we don't really think about it twice you know we in the sense that you know it's food to us you know and um you know one of the one of her friends was like I've never eaten like this before and it was like I think it was like pasta and sausage and I think like some like frozen fish you know and it was like you know my dad threw it together real quick and and this kid was like oh my god like he was moved by the fact that we gave him this you know and it was it meant so much to him and it might not mean that much to anybody else but it means so much to him because he had never experienced that right and so when you start getting into that space of gratitude you just kind of get to the spot where you're like wow like holy moly like i'm so blessed right even if even if you're not making a ton of money you're still super blessed because you probably have a car maybe you have a car or maybe you don't find a reason to be grateful find a reason to be grateful even if it's wow i'm so thankful that i'm able to wear clothes and hey i'm so thankful that i can shower and brush my teeth like even if it's as simple as that that is going to help you recover from a motivation crash right and so you know choosing to you know, stay consistent in the things that you achieve. And I talk about consistency a lot because I think it's one of the best characteristics. Consistency, discipline, drive. Those are like the two, the three things that I try to live by characteristically speaking, not value wise, but like those are the three things that I know matter so much. And being consistent in whatever it is that you're doing Um, even if it's consistent in your reputation, like, you know, like I 
consistent in being loyal to people, you know, being loyal to your employer or being loyal to a client, you know, and of course, don't feel guilty or obligated to stay a specific place if you're meant to grow. But if you're just in the same place, you know, what does it look like to stay consistent and build good habits while I'm here, you know, and it's a huge thing. And you know, choosing to get up when life knocks you down. It's going to happen. Life is going to be like, mm, mm, mm. Uh, life is going to be like, I don't want to do this. You know, you're, you're not doing this today. And you have to remember life doesn't control you. You control your life, right? And so you have to also be able to acknowledge your negative emotions. Like I'm having a motivational crash right now. I have no motivation to do this. I feel like I have no drive, but that's probably not true because I know why I'm doing this. And you know, I got to, refuse to stay in this negative space, right? Like, no. And so <laughs> this was, you know, I'm, I'm Christian. Um, if you listen to my um, journey to entrepreneurship episode, you'll know a little bit about my background. Um, but for the listeners that maybe haven't listened to that episode, I'm a pastor's kid. I serve on the leadership at my church as a children's director and as a um, uh, a leader for our prayer service and we do a number of things and I'm a part of a number of different um, moving parts of our church and um, one time we were in a leadership meeting and uh, we were talking about fasting because um, every once in a while we call a fast and we fast we pray and um, something that um, my uh, older brother, Eric, um, who has his own podcast as well called Brand My Heart, go check it out. Um, it'll be in the show notes below. And he also talked about thankfulness and gratitude in his most recent episode, which I highly suggest everyone to listen to. Um, but anyways, he, he was talking about it and he said, I'm fasting negativity. And everyone was like, oh my God, like that, that's, you know, it, we kind of like laughed at it a little bit. And then some you know a few others joined in you know like yeah i'm gonna fast that too and it is so much harder than you could ever expect a negativity fast to go it makes you more aware of how negative you actually are and it was a big reality check for for me personally i i personally actually don't remember talking about it afterwards but it was a big, big, big hard thing for me to learn and to kind of look at myself in the face afterwards and be like, wow, you are a super negative person. So we need to fix that. <laughs> right. And so if you want, let's do a challenge. Like I'm so down for it. Let's do a, a, a fasting negativity challenge or cutting out negativity, whatever you want to call it. And try it. Try for a week cutting out negativity. When that happens, don't beat yourself up. Just just be like, nope, that's a negative thought. Nope. I refuse to allow that negative thought to enter my atmosphere. It's not happening. And you'll be amazed to see what happens. And I personally do it every once in a while now and it actually really does help because I am much more self-aware about when I am being negative and when I am struggling with negativity because of that exercise essentially. And it is the most powerful thing that I could ever um, suggest. It is a powerful tool and you know, Again, life is going to happen and it's up to you on whether you're going to stay in that space or not, whether you're going to let that negativity into the atmosphere of your brain, into the atmosphere of your thoughts. It's called, we have a saying called take every thought captive. And it's basically the practice of when a negative thought comes into your brain, being so aware of what is in your mind and what is happening in your thoughts and just rejecting the evil thoughts or negative thoughts or depressing thoughts or whatever the case may be and accepting and inviting positive thoughts and ideas and creative flows and and all that kind of things and so fasting negativity is not just being like oh i'm not going to be negative this week no nothing can affect me and just sweeping it under the rug you know it's it's not that it is 
acknowledging that's a negative thought i reject it from my from my thought process right now and it works it works so good it is the best thing i think my older brother has ever taught me is <laughs> or had me join him in with with uh which is a negativity fast so um but i'm really curious on your thoughts on uh motivation and you know because I, I do a podcast talking about the things that I'm passionate about and the things, you know, that kind of sharing my point of view on life. And I love learning. Like I, if everything I have said in this podcast is wrong, cool, I can learn, you know? And I could go back and be like, well, that was completely wrong. And, you know, and then I can learn, okay, this is actually what it is. Or I can learn something new that maybe I didn't know and add it to my repertoire, if you will, um, of what my belief system is about motiv- surrounding motivation. And so I just, I think it's a really great thing to be, for me to be able to do that. And so, um, you know, I, again, I'm really curious what people's thoughts on, um, on the topic of motivation is because again, personally, I feel like motivation crashes are like barely talked about as well so when you're selling motivation hey maybe talk about the pros and cons of motivation as well um but yeah i i could be wrong but i hope this helped you not feel alone when you feel the lack of motivation and i hope that you know when you feel the lack of motivation or drive in your life this will help kind of encourage you and help boost your confidence in the reality that being human is a part of life and life is not really all that great all the time and being human is a good part of life and we can be thankful for the fact that we're humans and we're able to feel things and empathize with people and you know be good to one another so i really want to know your thoughts (laughs) so connect with me on instagram at the ellie way or join my free facebook group uh 818 the power to create wealth and uh, all this information as usual will be posted in the show notes and uh, don't forget to rate and review this podcast uh this episode and don't forget to subscribe on your way out and um on whatever platform you're listening to at the moment so just remember you're not alone in this journey of entrepreneurship there have been a lot of people talking about how entrepreneurship can be lonely and I believe that yes it can be but it doesn't have to be and so if you're looking for a community of entrepreneurs reach out to me I'd love to have you join my community at 818 the power to create wealth and uh, remember you have been given the power to create wealth so go get them cheers